Hello everyone, SunfactorSuperone here, back with another video. Now, as you all know, 1.21.20 has released, and with it, broke a lot of adults. So, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about how you can actually sort of fix your add-ons and talk about what kind of things were broken in this update. And just a bit of a side note, I've completely stopped working on Voicecraft and am only focusing on Bedrock Replays, which sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing at times, so yeah, there's that. And of course, I have been very busy lately with my life because of university studies and I'm moving houses. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So in the technical updates, in the updates change log, I'll be leaving a link in the description below. You can see that on the top, it says they removed the holiday creators features experiment. That means that when you're creating a new world, there is no holiday creator feature experiment except for upcoming creator features, but I think that's more for graphical side. So I don't think that's really anything add-on related that much or behavior pack related, which is what the holiday creator features enabled us to do is to do a lot of behavioral stuff. So now that holiday creator features have been removed, they do link us to a custom components link. And with custom components, it does replace a lot of the functionality that was removed from holiday creator features. The only downside is you need to learn JavaScript and an entire language or an entire scripting language just to be able to re-implement your systems. So that's one of the downsides. The other downside to this is the fact that it's fairly slow because the framework behind the script API is actually quite slow. It's actually slower than the Node.js runtime. So you have to be mindful that when you're writing, when you're re rewriting your code or your behavioral stuff, you need to take into consideration how many API calls you make to the script API and how efficient you make your code. Otherwise it will just tank the Minecraft tick speed and it'll probably crash the world as well or crash the server. So you don't want to do that. So just be mindful. With that being said, when you update your add-on, you also need to set your minimum version or format version for all entities, blocks and items to be higher than 1.21.10 or 1.21.20. This is because if you don't use those format versions, you will not get access to the new content or the new behaviors that add-ons get in this update. Because a lot of things were moved from the experimental features into release mode. And to use, to use those features, you need to set the format version for each item, block and entity to 1.21.20 the recommended version. So just keep that in mind when you're updating your add-ons or you're creating new add-ons. Just keep that in mind. Next, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that was done. You can see here that the deprecated the volume, the volume area command. I'm not sure what that did, but I bet nobody else, nobody used it. So I bet they just removed it because of that. And then they of course fixed a couple of bugs here and into the aliases, which I'm not entirely sure, but that's probably an alias of something of an entity that you're probably using game that was probably removed. Fix an issue with particles, fix the bug. Geometry blocks, they've changed that from 30 to validate whether the geometries or blocks fit within the 30 divided by 6, 16 unit bounds, which is a little bit weird, but honestly, it's Mojang and you can't really do anything or you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes as to why they picked this number. It could have been 32 divided by 16, but who knows what they thought. Anyways, 
Next up is the API. So all they've really done is just move a lot of the stuff to the stable version. So 1.12.0 version, if you want to use that version, it'll probably come up in here. So if we go to reference documentation, link in the description below. And if we look through here, there's 1.12.0. Now it does say there's 1.13.0 as stable. That's mostly due to the fact that I am on the Bedrock Experimental and this is based on the preview version of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So you have to keep that in mind. Next is these item cu custom components. These are pretty cool. You can, you can test these out yourself. They have been moved from experimental to stable. So we, if we go and search for custom component, I believe that we can see two that we can use right now. So block custom component, which has a bunch of things or a bunch of events that we can use and item custom component, which also has another set of events that replace the JSON code. So when you're updating your add-ons, you, you will probably have to use all of these. And then of course they did a couple of other stuff. And then in the micro server UI, they released the submit button or submit button method. So basically that will allow us to rename the submit button on the form. So if we go to modal form data and submit button, we can change the text on the submit button. So we could change it to something like send message or send private message through a mailbox system or something like that, which is pretty cool. And of course, a couple of blocks, they just split them up. There's not a lot to talk about here. And then blocks.json, they have now sort of done a couple of things with it. I'm not entirely sure since I haven't done much with blocks. So I'm not entirely sure how it'll affect people. And they've split light blocks as well. So now instead of typing a data valley, you have to write a light block valley or the light block number instead because they're all split instances. And then of course they have a couple more blocks and pretty much it. It's just saying the same thing as what it said above here. And then now with the camera, two new things were added. There's the micro follow orbit, which is going to be pretty useful. So basically it will allow you to follow a entity or the, follow the player in a third person or a custom third person view, which is pretty cool. And then they have a new free camera option that allows you to target an entity, which is really, really cool. Instead of having to have a repeating command, you can just have a command or one single command run at once to follow a target entity which is really really cool but of course these you have to enable through the experiments these two experiments here and next the commands so music will no longer be stopped by the stop sound command so now you have to use slash music stop to actually stop the music for a player or you have to put in the execute execution of it I believe that also applies to every single other player but I'm not entirely sure how this exactly works and then of course there's a couple of other stuff there was one interesting feature the Minecraft behavior dot swim up or breath that has been released so it says here that in vanilla this is used by the dolphin so basically when the dolphin jumps out of water I think that's when this this AI goal comes into effect, which is really, really cool. And of course, the Minecraft behavior move away from target has been renamed to Minecraft behavior move around target. So move away from target to move around target to better describe what the goal does. Just keep that in mind if you're updating your entities. And particle emitters, there's not a whole lot to say here. They just improved the lighting for it. And couple of other stuff so now there is a slot to armor dot body for entities which is pretty cool 
So now we can just query on custom entities or other entities like horses as it says here. And of course with custom components, they're all released out of experimental in 1.21.10 format version. Just keep that in mind. You have to set your entity you have to set your block or item to the format version 1.21.10 or higher. I don't know why it says end higher, but it should be all higher for to use the custom components for your items. And then there's a couple of other stuff. And then there's learning portal documents. These are, I'm not entirely sure what this is mentioning, but it seems pretty interesting or a stab in the direction of custom dimensions maybe i'm not entirely sure these are pretty cool and then molang state time has been released from the upcoming creator features toggle and then petrified oak slab i'm not entirely sure why this slab exists it just exists so uh i believe oh okay so i can see here will behave like other stone slabs cannot be destroyed by fire okay that's the difference. I was confused there for a bit. And then structure block, a couple of bug fixes there. That's pretty good. Hopefully, yeah, here we go. So fix an issue where player ID was not being saved on structure blocks when saving the existing level. I believe that's when you exit the structure block and when you save it, it reverts back to its original position for the player, which is which gets quite annoying at times. So Luckily, this was fixed. This is really, really cool. And then this is just saying a couple of the same things, which is just moving from beta to the 1.12.0 release version. So script API at this point, you will probably use release version over experimental version because there is a lot more modules in release version that will not break when Minecraft updates and will cause a lot of lot less headaches when Minecraft updates and things break so use stable versions of script API instead of experimental features unless you 100% need to use experimental versions and then there's a couple of custom component stuff entity components which is pretty cool player cursor inventory which adds read only access to the player cursors inventory and that ability to read it so now that's there, we can also do a couple of other stuff. We can check for is hardcore, which is pretty cool. And then last but not least, the blocks now have the ability to let you customize how it looks in first person, third person, and on the head and everything else. So we can see here that we can see in first person right hand, they have a translation, rotation, and scale, and you could have uh, a different set of translation, rotation, and scales for the GUI. So this is when it's in the inventory slot. So as you can see here, this is the GUI scale. And then the first person right hand, first person left hand. I believe this is something to reference for when blocks or when we get the left-handed version or Java left hand which will be really really cool and then third person right hand third person left hand the ground so this is when you drop it on the ground i believe so when it's on the ground and then fixed i'm not entirely sure what this is and then head is when you probably put it on the head so when you put the block on the head which uh i'm not entirely sure why you would want to do that but uh it exists anyways so so what I'm going to talk about is the future of the channel and what I've decided is I'm going to delete all of the previous tutorials because first of all I don't want to mislead people with outdated information because at times I get comments asking why this doesn't work and things like that because it's outdated and even though it's in the title it still misleads people which is quite annoying so I it's I am going to pretty much delete it and it's better off for people 
And secondly is I'm going to redo all of the tutorials as well. So that means every single tutorial from part one, which is setting up bridge, setting up your environment, your Minecraft environment, and a couple of other things. So hopefully that clears a lot of things up and I'll see you in the next tutorial and video. See ya.